Impact Forces An impact force happens when one object hits another object, such as during crashes and collisions, which can cause damage to objects and injuries to people. We are subjected to impact forces throughout our daily lives. For example, when you walk, jog or run. When you jump, when you have an egg smashed off your head. It's important to minimise impact forces as much as we can, so damage to property and injuries to people can be minimised or avoided entirely. To do this, we need to know how to calculate impact forces. And our understanding starts with Newton's second law. From Newton's second law, we know that force equals mass times by acceleration. We also know that acceleration equals the final velocity, take away the initial velocity, divided by the amount of time taken for the change in velocity to happen. If we combine these two equations, we can create an equation that helps us to calculate impact force. We can see in this new equation that impact force equals mass times by final velocity take away initial velocity divided by the time taken for the change of velocity to happen. From my previous video on momentum, we know we can calculate momentum by multiplying mass and velocity. And that's what we get if we multiply out the brackets. Impact force equals final momentum take away initial momentum divided by the time taken for the change in momentum to happen. Final momentum take away initial momentum tells us the change in momentum. So we can simplify the equation into impact force equals change in momentum divided by time taken for change. So, to minimise the impact force, we could make the mass and velocity of the object as small as we can? Well, that's not always possible. Because what if the object is a human? The mass of the human is what it is. You can't change it. You could always get the human to decrease their velocity, but what if they're in a race and they need to travel fast to win? We can't slow the velocity away down. Good start from, from uh, Bolt. Bolt leading a moment and going away. Gay trying to go with him and he's going being dragged through to second place, but he's going to win it by two meters. 9.58. The world record's gone. So, usually, the best way to reduce the impact force is to make the time taken for the change in momentum to happen over as large as possible. Let's look at some examples and I'll explain. If we look at this Tesla Model 3 going through its Euro NCAP safety test, we can see a crumple zone has been engineered at the front of the car. The purpose of a crumple zone is to increase the amount of time over which the car is brought to a stop. Instead of the car being rigid and perhaps stopping in one one hundredth of a second, the car can crumple and stop in perhaps one tenth of a second, which is still a very short amount of time, but it's ten times bigger than when it had no crumple zone if the car was totally rigid. Since the time for the change in momentum to happen is now ten times bigger, that means the impact force is ten times smaller, which will decrease injuries. The use of airbags will further increase the amount of time that the driver's change in momentum happens over to further decrease injury. And finally, the use of seat belts, which are ever so slightly elastic, will further increase the time for the change in momentum to happen over, so that will further decrease the impact force. Let's look at another example. The suspension in mountain bikes, motorbikes, cars and other vehicles are all designed to increase the time over which the change in momentum happens. Instead of landing hard with a large impact force, the suspension allows the bike's vertical momentum to change over a greater time, which decreases the impact force on the rider. Here's an example of a bungee jumper. The elastic bungee rope is designed to stretch so that the jumper's momentum changes over a long time. Once again, this means that the impact force due to deceleration is small. The parkour runner in this clip rolls as he lands, which means his momentum changes over a greater length of time, resulting in a lower impact force. 
A pole vaulter builds up a large momentum in order to jump over the bar. If the pole vaulter landed on the ground, her momentum would change to zero very quickly and the large deceleration could cause large injuries. Instead, the pole vaulter lands on a crash mat which is designed to ensure her change in momentum happens over a longer time, resulting in a smaller impact force and no injuries. Acceleration means that the momentum changes from a large value to zero over a greater length of time, creating a smaller impact force. If we look inside a safety helmet, we can see layers of foam have been used, which provides cushioning for the head if it suddenly comes to a stop during a collision. The foam can compress, which increases the time over which the change in momentum happens, resulting in a smaller impact force. You're starting to see the pattern? Here's the clip of a cross-section of an aeroplane being tested for its structural integrity. An aeroplane is designed to have a degree of flexibility in the structure to absorb an impact with the ground in the event of an emergency landing. Because of the flexibility in the plane's structure, the change of momentum that occurs as the plane collides with the ground happens over a longer time, which decreases the impact force and reduces injuries to passengers. At the start of the video, we saw an egg smashing on a person's head. Hopefully, you now understand that the egg's change in momentum happened too fast, resulting in a large enough impact to break the egg. In order to catch the egg without it breaking, you need to pull your arm backwards at the same time as catching it. So the deceleration of the egg is smaller, which means the change in momentum happens over a longer time, creating a small enough impact force not to break the egg. Here are some questions for you to try. Question 1. Why have running shoes got thick foam soles? Pause the video and think about your answer. And here's the answer. Foam has been added to the bottom of the trainers so that when the foot strikes the ground, the foam compresses, which causes the change in momentum to happen over a greater time, which decreases the impact force on the runner's joints and reduces injury. Here's some more questions. Pause the video and give them a go. And here's the answers. Well, I hope that was useful. I've related this concept to lots of real life examples to reinforce it. Subscribe to the channel so you can receive notifications. Work hard and be nice. Bye for now.